Hi everybody, welcome back to my next free tutorial Friday. And this week um, I've been perplexed and have been thinking all week about a question that uh, Michael Meyer asked on the last uh, free tutorial Friday from last year, at the end of last year. He asked about uh, developing your critical eye. And what a critical eye and what that refers to is that you develop the ability to uh, critique not only your own work and figure out um, what could be wrong with it, what could be made better. You also start to critique uh, other people's work and develop an eye towards um, styling and content and sort of appropriateness for the project and also for your own personal work. So I thought it was a really good question um, and it's got me a bit, a bit perplexed and I'm going to explain why because uh, I know exactly how to do it in a formal sort of university or college level situation or classroom situation, uh, which I'm going to explain that path, but how to develop your critical eye without going to a uh, classroom situation is a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to do my best to answer it, but I don't think it's a, something I'm going to answer completely today. It's going to take a little bit more thought, um, but I have thought about it all week. So let me share, and that's, and that's going to lead into why these magazines are here. Um, We'll come back to that in a second. So let me just first share with you the normal path um, in developing your critical eye as a designer or artist. So typically, um, people go to school for this sort of thing. All right, so they head off to school. And let's just take, uh, let's take Art Center College of Design as an example. So you go off to school and you get into school with a portfolio, so you have to show some you know, certain level of skill and interest in the subject matter. Um, let's say you go to a public school somewhere. What happens is you get um, a group. Let's say this is the group. You get a group of like-minded individuals. So in this group, there's a bunch of students. Okay. And they have an instructor. And that instructor, I'll just give them a capital I, the instructor is an individual um, who has professional experience and has already developed um, and matured their critical eye, meaning they can look at a piece of work on the wall or um, it, really in the context of anything. It doesn't have to be artwork. Uh, it can be design, engineering, it can be math even. They, they're more experienced, they're more knowledgeable, and that's why you go to the school in the first place to learn from that instructor. They have a very mature, developed um, critical eye. And that eye, right, they can use to tell you, oh, this is what's wrong with your work. This is how to make it better. Okay? So there's a process in that classroom situation with a group of like-minded individuals, which are all the students that are all interested in the same subject. They're going to learn a lot from each other because they're all in that same class. And as they learn, they start to share ideas and they talk back and forth and they develop basically a language or a vernacular um, to process and talk about the subject matter. So let's see how this works. So a normal classroom situation, this group would show up and this instructor would start, usually start the class with a lecture. Okay, that lecture um, is going to be on whatever is the topic for that week. And that's going to build in. Let's take Art Center, uh, right? We're just talking about Art Center. We have 14 week terms. So there's going to be 14 lectures, roughly, um, in a term. And then after that lecture, there is some sort of uh, assignment, right? Homework for students to do for the week. Then the next following week, so this is, say, class one, class two, those students are going to come back with their homework, right? They're going to present that homework. And this is where you learn to talk about, right, your work. So you learn to have to verbally present it and show it on the wall. So you have to do both of those. And then there's going to be a critique. We'll call that the crit. Now, this is the really important part right here. Okay, and then essentially this is the formula you do an instructor, right? 
with a mature critical eye and experience, presents a subject matter through a lecture. They assign some homework related to the lecture. You go away for a week or a few days, do the work, bring it back, present it, right, to this group of people. So you learn to present in a group, you learn to talk about your work um, in a public way, and then the crit. And this mature design eye, right, critical eye, will critique the work and help you to understand what could be made better. Now, the important part about the crit is that in the critique of the work, you learn what to look for in the work um, to make it better on your own. And so the most important thing about this, um, and this is, and then essentially this same process, lecture, assignment, homework, present, critique, and then you repeat. Okay? So repeat over and over throughout the whole term, each, each class, 14 weeks. And there are many of these classes on all different subjects. And what you learn to do slowly over time is that you develop a critical eye. And your critical eye here helps you, most importantly, when you're home, in your home studio, doing your homework from the previous week, right? When you're home doing this, you start to look and analyze it and critique it yourself. And that's why it's called a critical eye. So you look at this and you say, oh, oh I'm starting to see what's wrong with it. I could fix the perspective. So usually this starts out and you start to critique and you start with the basic classes, right? We start with foundation. Okay, and I list foundation as skills. Right, and in those skills you would have, you can have all subjects, right? You can have um, model building, uh, drawing, rendering, material indication, but you can also have design, design theory, color theory, um, art history, right? So even though I call it as a skill, it can still be um, sort of theory based, but it, effectively it's foundation, right? It's what you build on to develop and mature as a designer. After you acquire these foundation skills, let's say that this takes out of four years, Let's say this takes uh, two, two to probably two and a half years to acquire. You never really stop learning that. Um, but then by that time, you're able to do the basic things, right? You can develop a critical eye and you know um, how light and shadow works. You know how to indicate form. You know how to do material indication. You know the basics of uh, 3D modeling. You know the basics of um, drafting. What then happens is you start to mature and develop your own personal style, right? So be a little bit more personal. Okay, so first you sort of develop your personal style. This is maybe in your, out of four years, maybe that's in year three. Three to four, obviously. Then what really is the next step in a very mature critical eye about work and professional work is that you know, all of this time has been spent analyzing your own work and saying, well, what, what's right and what's wrong about it, right? And talking to your friends and your other classmates, etc., to understand that and help each other make corrections. But when you go here, okay, so you use all that information. Now you get and you develop your personal style. Great. You've now developed a strong critical eye about your own work. You're making your own work better from your personal perspective. Right, so from your point of view, it's improving. All the foundation skills are in place. And now you're starting to develop interesting design work. You're, we're working on originality um, and things of that nature. But then you move into the professional world. Okay, when you get into the professional world, and this is say, so this is say year three, three, four, you're still here in school. Then you get out, you move into the professional world. Okay, now when you're in the professional world, Here's where it gets really tricky, because you're no longer focused only on your own portfolio. You know, it's no longer just what you're doing with your own work. It's now how does your work support, um, let's say this, how does your 
portfolio and work and art and design support business. And when you design for business, in, in the case of industrial design, you're designing for an end user, right, a customer. And so now you have to have a critical eye, right, my little eye icon. You have to have a little critical eye about your work as it relates to the perception, okay, of a customer. There's our, there's our customer. So you now have to critique your own work as it relates to a brief or a project that you've been given from marketing or sales or a design director you might work for. And of course, usually you have a senior designer that you're working for. You don't, you don't have to do this on your own, but let's say you went out and you were a freelance artist um, or designer and you wanted to be a consultant. Well, then you do have to do this on your own. So you're gonna have to be more mature and now start to critique your work as perceived by business. It's different than d only critiquing your work to improve your own skill sets and develop personal style and originality in your work. It's different. So you can see, hopefully, that um, this formula is, is quite strong. And this is why I think schools, bricks and mortar schools, will always be relevant, is that you can't underestimate this power of, an, of a group of individuals that are all like-minded with a singular goal and how much they can accelerate the learning curve by starting to develop a way to talk to each other about their work and all developing you know, a critical eye at the same time. So that, that process of maturing under the sort of tutelage or you know, guidance of an experienced instructor has a lot of value. And let's just take as an example, still talking about Art Center, um, let's talk Art Center Entertainment Design, 32 studio classes. Okay, studio classes are um, both drawing and rendering, but also design, typography, model building. So all the uh, hands-on 32 studio classes, a few of those classes are taught by the same instructor, multiple different subjects. So let's say over the course of four years, you have probably 28 of these people, okay? Each one with a mature, professional, developed, critical eye. So you've gotten a lot of exposure to a lot of different opinions because the thing that really matters is the quality of this critique. Without the quality of the critique being very high, okay, you can actually start to develop really bad habits, learn incorrect information, and be worse off with a poor critique. Now, I wanted to walk you through all that to, to give you sort of my background and how I know that this works to develop uh, an individual's critical eye over a period of time, okay? Because that's been my, my background has been teaching in, you know, at university level. So, Here's the dilemma for me this week, challenged by Michael Meyer asking about how to develop a critical eye, is that how would you do that if you're not fortunate enough to be in a school like CCS or Art Center or Royal College of Art or, you know, uh, there's probably, well, there are amazing schools all over the world. So, you know, in all different disciplines, this, this formula carries over to all different sorts of subjects. So how can you... Try to get this without going here. And that's the real problem, is that I don't have a great answer for this yet. I will try to give you some suggestions today, but I don't have a fantastic answer for a way to do all of this without being in that group of like-minded individuals with a quality critique and a structure and exposure to 28 right, different professionals over the course of over a period of time. And time is critical here. The, developing a critical eye isn't something you do overnight. It's not like you take and it's not like learning a skill set in a drawing book. It's, it takes time, so be patient. Okay, so let's say that you don't have the access to that. How else can you do it? Well, nowadays, of course, we have, um, we have this thing, right? the online presence. So you can find uh, online schools, 
right? I have personal experience with uh, Schoolism, for instance. And I like their format and their critique, and you can get a professional critique um, from somebody that's the equivalent teacher at some place like Art Center. How else can you do it? Well, you know, there's the Noman Workshop. Uh, through Noman, you can get uh, a lot of good information. You can get all the, the coursework. There's books, there's magazines, right? So there's, of course, YouTube. So to replace the, the first part, the lecture part, there are other sources. Obviously, you found this YouTube channel. This is a source of lectures. And so I think there's a lot of things online you can find to replace the lecture component right, of this. So if we're looking at the first step here, okay, the lecture, where do I find information? That's, that's a good place. Okay. How else can you find the lecture information? Well, it brings back to these magazines. You can do reading, right? So you can read about um, design projects. You can read about um, how things are made, how they're done. You can also read critiques of that work in these sorts of magazines um, and case studies. And that's all great. Um, you can also put, learn skills, right? So you can learn skills through a book like this, right? Framed Inc. Um, Skillful Huntsman, where we shared the, the design process of three of my students from Art Center. Um, and then, of course, you can learn how to draw, right? With this one, you can learn how to do vehicle packaging. So you can still get all the textbooks that are taught in those schools, right? So a lot of those classes require these books um, to be used. So you could actually get access to the exact same material um, that's being shared in those schools. The hardest part is going to be how do you replicate the quality critique, right? So the big one Is two, is two things. Um, let's see how best to help with this. So there's two things. There's the group, right, of like-minded individuals. And then there's the instructor. And how do we replicate this in an outside environment, right, from around the world? Well, I think they're online communities. This is probably your best bet. Um, so you could get online, you can join a community of artists like CG Hub, places like that, and you can start to share ideas. Now, the problem with those sort of online communities that are for free and you join, they're fantastic, but the problem with those is the quality of this. The quality of the critique is really helpful, and if this is not high quality, like I said, it can actually start to develop you know, bad habits and turn you in the wrong direction. So getting crits from, you have to qualify the crit. You know, who's giving you the crit? What are their qualifications? And, you know, can you trust it, basically? And that becomes part of the problem. So where could you go to find quality critiques if you're not in a school, room, a school situation? Well, um, you know, anybody who's going to give you a really quality critique that's qualified is probably busy working doing the job. So it's really tough to get um, people like myself or you know other instructors from Art Center or other quality schools to give take their time to give you a quality critique because they're busy writing books trying to do and create content that helps you know a larger group of people as opposed to one individual so it's hard to find this quality critiques for free um, and again this is the value of going to a school but we're trying to figure out a, a, a path without going to a school um, so, where can you find these? A good place is um, Comic-Cons slash trade shows. Now, what I mean by that is that here you get a bunch of uh, designers and artists, let's say in the entertainment world, that go to Comic-Cons, they have sketchbooks they're selling, they're sitting there signing books. Effectively, you have a captive audience, right? So, you know they're gonna be there um, and then also at a lot of those comic cons and trade shows, um, there's portfolio reviews. So you could sign up for a portfolio review. You can get a quality critique from um, 
you know, a trusted industry professional and that can help to improve. And so if you get multiples of those, so, you know, live events are really great, All right? So live events like Comic-Cons, trade shows, um, there was uh, Autodesk had a, a uh, basically a creativity uh, convention in Las Vegas called Cave. I think hopefully they'll do it again this year. So things like that. Creative event, lots of speakers, just a one day event. And um, they had a trade show component where you would go down and you could have talk to the artists and the designers, get a critique. Um, so those sorts of things are important. Also you learn a huge amount of information in a short period of time. So I think live events are great with portfolio reviews. You're looking for a quality critique. Um, you can try to emulate the classroom situation of, or the community via an online group. Um, and you need to find mentors or quality individuals that um, you trust that have the right sort of resume to get these critiques from. So don't believe sort of everything everyone tells you um, because it may not be correct and it may actually cause more harm than good. So always consider the source and also realize that unless it's foundation work, foundation work is sort of physics and, and you know, a lot of times it's basically right or it's wrong. It's pretty simple to tell. Um, but if it's a subjective styling issue, you know, even though this person might be a very qualified individual um, and have the right resume, when you start talking about styling, that things you can't quantify with physics, then this also becomes very subjective. So always take the sort of advanced critiques with a grain of salt, um, but it's important to listen, it's important to absorb, and then reflect upon those critiques. And always remember that a critique of your work when you're developing your skill sets is not a critique of you as an individual, right? It's a critique of your professional work that you've put out there, okay, for critique. So it's tough. You need to build a thick skin, right? If you really want to advance your work, try to have, try to take a mature attitude when somebody critiques your work. Everyone, everybody's entitled to have a, a critique or an opinion. And you need to take that um, and you need to respect it. And then realize it's not a personal attack, right? It's not saying that, oh, you know, there's a difference between the work you do and who you are. And so try to separate those two. It becomes difficult, especially you, you put a lot of hours into creating something, especially artwork, and you've grown to love it, right? You've grown to love it because you put in all the labor. It still may not be any good, but you love it because you spent all the time on it. Therefore, you think it must be good but it's actually can be the opposite, especially with foundation work. You can spend weeks and weeks and weeks working on, you know, trying to get, uh, improve your perspective drawing skills and still not quite get it. These things take time, they take years. So have patience, realize when somebody critiques your work, they're not critiquing you as an individual. Pause, listen, and then reflect, and try to, and then that will help you to develop your critical eye, to develop your own work, because the most important thing is that you start to become an individual and you think about the work in, in a sort of, well, in a critical way, basically. You start to reflect upon it. And then when you're alone in your studio, it's 2 a.m., you've got a deadline the next morning, you're doing all the work. You need to be able to look at that and say, oh, this is the right direction. Okay, this is the right style. This is the solution for this problem, whatever that problem might be. And you'll know it as you mature and as you, you know, put more effort into becoming, you know, a better critical thinker. So, and in this, in our case, mostly we're talking about visual thinkers. So hopefully I, um, that answered, Michael, your question a little bit um, about how you can try to, to make a path to develop your critical eye. Um, the question actually was how did I develop my critical eye and... Um, the way that I did it was this way, because I went to Art Center and um, I went to school and I went through this process and then I've taught this process for the last 20 years or so. But I also do things outside that school. Um, 
and more now than ever, I'm full-time doing books and, and lectures around the world. And so I'm trying to come up with a solution, right? Things like this, that's gonna require, it's gonna take me a little longer to come up with the better things. I'll, I'm sure I'll document it by the time I get around to doing the how to design book. But hopefully you found this helpful for now and um, get out there, do great work and uh, have a great week. Bye-bye.